everyone, this is Teresa from Base 10 Montessori, and today we have another lesson on the fraction insets. Now, I know I said we were going to get into the operations in our next video, but we really have one more lesson we need to go through before we get into addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And this lesson is called Simple Equivalences. Now, we really already covered this topic in our first video. However, we only did it as a sensorial impression of equivalences. This time we're going to be more formal and we're going to write the fractions this time and we're going to write the equivalences and you're going to see that as we do this, this really works into addition. But before we get started, let me just say it is raining pretty hard outside. So if you hear it raining in the background, hopefully it is more soothing than it is distracting, but we're going to push forward and get through this lesson. So to start with, we're going to start with the family of the halves and we're gonna start with some graph paper. Now I'm going to include a free link to some graph paper that you can get through Montessori Print Shop. I'm gonna put that in the comment section down below. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna show you how to access the free materials on Montessori Print Shop and also show you a little bit more of what they have to offer. So that'll be at the end of the video as well if you need some extra resources. Now let's get back to starting this lesson. This lesson comes in two parts. The first part is called Simple Equivalences and we're gonna use the same family for that. And the second part is going to be called mixed equivalences. Now to start off with this first lesson, like I said, we're gonna start with the family of the halves. And we're just gonna take one half out and set it aside. And we're gonna ask the student, what is this? What's left inside the circle? And at this point in time, they really should be able to identify and label and write all the different fraction insets. So they should be able to tell you that this is one half. And you can ask them, how do we write one half? When we're writing the family of the halves, the bottom number is a two. That's the family name. And the top number always tells us how many. So how many do we have in here? One. So our family name is the denominator, and that's two. And then our numerator is how many, and that is one. And that is one half. And we're going to write an equal next to that one half. Now we have this space right next to it and it's an equal amount of space, right? This space right here is equal to the red space right here. And we need to fill this empty space exactly. And we're going to use the same family to do this. Now at this point, they might be remembering that sensorial exploration of fractions and they might already be anticipating that they need to go and find the family of the fourths. If not, you can go and get it and you can show them the family of the fourths. So now that we have the family of the fourths, we can take one out and we can put it right there. And we can say, what is this called? One fourth. It comes from the family of the fourths and how many have we used? We have used one. One fourth. However, we have one half, one fourth, but there's still an empty space right here. So let's use another one and see what happens. So now we have one half, one fourth, and one fourth we've added another one fourth. So remember our addition sign looks like this. And again, we've used the family of the fourths and how many did we use to fill in this top part? We just used one. So if we take a look right here, we started out with one half and then we filled the empty space at the bottom with one fourth and we filled the empty space at the top with one fourth. So you can see that one half equals one fourth plus one fourth. And that is all we're gonna do with the equivalences at this point in time. Remember this lesson is really geared towards five and six year olds, so we're not gonna reduce our fractions down. We're not gonna do anything more than just show that one half is the same as one fourth plus one fourth. So we're not going to do one fourth plus one fourth equals two fourths and then reduce it down. We're just going to show this and keep it very simple. 
And you can go ahead and repeat this experience with any of the insets in any way you want. And they might come across the fact that not everything can fit exactly into the missing space. And if that's the case, they have to put it back and keep looking for a family that works and fits within that space exactly. So that's the first part of the lesson, and you can change that up however you want. You don't have to continue using the halves. You can go to any of the insets you want and do the same exploration. The next part is going to be a little more complicated. The next part is going to be mixed equivalences. So again, we're gonna start with the family of the halves and we're gonna remove one half. And again, just like before, we're gonna write one half and we're gonna write equals. But this time we're gonna do something a little bit different. We're gonna start out just like before with placing the one fourth at the bottom. And we're gonna write that down there, right? Because we are gonna use one fourth. But this time we need to fill this in with a different family. I don't wanna use the family of the fourths. So we're gonna use something different. So let's get out the family of the eights. I'm gonna take out one eighth and put it right there. But I still have a little bit left, don't I? Let's try another piece and see if it works. It does, it works. So we started out with one half and one half equals one fourth plus, what family are we using here? the family of the eights, so that goes at the bottom. How many did we use right here? We used one. And then we still had some space left over right here, so we used another one. So again, this is the family of the eights. And we used one. Now they might say two and do two eighths. If they do that, that's okay. But for right now, we're not adding them together. They might naturally add that together, and that would be okay if they jump to it right away. But again, this lesson is not about addition yet. I know we're showing it, and to us as the adult, we're looking at this and we're thinking addition. But to the student, we're not introducing this as addition yet. So we're going to go through and simply use the labels for each individual one. One half equals one fourth plus one eighth plus one eighth. And that's all we're going to do. We're not going to get any more into addition. We're just going to write it as we see it. So we're going to just write the individual labels for each piece that we use. And then in our next video, in our next lesson, we're going to go into what it looks like to do addition with common denominators. And then we'll go into subtraction, multiplication, and division. But for today, again, this is all we're going to go over. This is simply showing equivalences how to write them, and it gives some preparation for starting addition, but it's not going to be a formal addition lesson. So once they've started working with these simple equivalences like this, and they get really comfortable with doing this, that's when we'd start jumping into doing addition. Again, the age for this lesson would be five and a half, and what is the purpose of this lesson? The purpose is to familiarize themselves with the fractions, and that's it. Our control of error is within the material, which means that this is exploratory. We are not going to spend a lot of time harping on the child to get it right. We're simply gonna let them explore the material. The best way to understand if they're struggling with something isn't to come along and correct them every time they do this lesson. It's to observe, let them explore. Now, if they're getting silly with the material, if there's nothing purposeful in what they're doing, then yes, feel free to stop them and redirect them to something else. And maybe you have to represent this lesson, or maybe you have to have them work with a student that takes this lesson a little more seriously or enjoys it. That's probably the best way to get them interested in a lesson that they're not really enjoying. Or another reason they might not be purposeful with this lesson is maybe it's too easy for them. So you have to think through a few different ways to approach why a child might not be taking this lesson seriously or whether or not they're doing the work purposefully. Now, if you're looking for some resources, the graph paper that I used today looks like this. And it comes with two pages. Here's one page. And it comes with a big square on one side 
and a rectangle on this part. And on this side, it's all just rectangles. Now, this is a free template from Montessori Print Shop, and I will link to Montessori Print Shop in the comment section below. And I also want to show you a little bit more of their free materials and how to access their site and what to look for at their site. All right, so here we are. We're looking at my YouTube channel. And if you want to get to Montessori Print Shop, you can get to it very easily from my YouTube channel. And I have the link right here at the top of my YouTube channel. Now, when you click on the link right here, it will take you to Montessori Print Shop. Now it's going to say select your currency below. There's a drop down box right here to select your currency. You don't need to do that right now. That's something you can skip. So ignore that for right now and go back up to the top. And right here you're going to see it says home, individual files, bundled files, collections, new sales, and free. Now if you're interested in the graph paper that I showed you before, just click on the free. Scroll through their free section right here. And the graph paper is right here. So you can add that to your cart and then you can check out. Now you do have to put in your email address and your information, even though it is free. So I will warn you, you do have to go through all of that just to get the free materials. Uh, however, you do really need to have an email address for this because they have to email you the PDF. So that's really important. Now, if you're on a phone, it might look a little bit differently. So let me show you what it looks like if you're doing this from your phone. So if you are using your phone, it's going to take you to a screen that looks like this. And it's going to say Montessori Print Shop USA, select your currency below. Again, ignore that for right now and click the three lines at the top right next to the shopping cart. And when you do that, it's going to give you all the same information that we went through before, and you're just going to click on the free button, or you can explore all their other files and PDFs and materials that they have to offer here. Now, if you're interested in more of what Montessori Print Shop has to offer, let me give you an example here. Since we're doing math, let's go into the primary math section, and let's just click on operations right here. And what comes up are a lot of different cards for the stamp game, for operations like addition equation slips. They even have some templates for the snake game. They have some word problems. You can get an addition strip board printout with instructions for $5. And again, they have a lot of different stuff. They have uh, bead frame paper. And let's take a look here. You can get the large number cards for the decimal system. Again, here's the graph paper, which is free. So that's another way you can find it is just in the math section. And of course they have the math booklets for all the different operations as well. Finger charts, multiplication charts. Um, so they have a lot of great stuff and they're not very expensive. So if you don't mind having a paper PDF copy of the materials, uh, if you are a DIY kind of person and you don't mind laminating a bunch of stuff and printing a bunch of stuff or being creative with making your own materials, uh, Montessori Print Shop has a lot to offer. So again, just go to the top of my YouTube channel, click on that link or check the comment section down below and click on the link down below the video and you have access to everything that's going on at Montessori Print Shop, which I use all the time. I've made some videos on using their things and I will be using more of their materials in the future. So I highly recommend them. They're affordable. They really helped me through training and they really helped during COVID. They're very affordable resources. So with that being said, that's all I have to talk about today. If you like what I'm doing here, don't forget to give me a thumbs up, like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you in the next video.